morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So wonderful to have you here, uh, back out with me today on another adventure. It's uh, it's really nice knowing that you you enjoy coming along on these these days out. And of course, I'm back out in the Lake District. Today's purpose is is twofold, really. I'm going to show you the quickest and most direct route up to Scarfell Pike, England's highest mountain. So if you want to tick that off your list, uh, your bagging wain rights, you want to go up the highest mountain in England, this is the quickest way to get up there. The second purpose of today is to go and check out three of, I would say, arguably the best views in the Lake District, maybe even the world. I mean, it's, they're crazy, absolutely gorgeous. That's beyond uh, Scarfell Pike. The quickest way up, is via uh, Wasdale, so you park up in Wasdale and we head up towards, um, well that's Hollow Stones, that's where we're going basically up that way and towards Mickledore. What we're going to do is we're going to end up crossing Lingmel Gill. Hopefully it's not too full because sometimes it can get quite full and a bit tricky to cross that. And then we head up these really quite picturesque, beautiful uh, stepped path up towards Hollow Stones. The path branches off, it forks off then to the left takes you along a bit of a zigzag path that heads north and then it swings back around uh, in a southerly direction up to the summit. We're not going to go that way, we're going to go up towards Mickledore like I said, near J uh, Lord's Rake as well which we did just over a year ago I think that was now. So yes it should be quite interesting. I've got my ice axe today, it's probably a little bit overkill, there's a little bit of snow on top but it is really just for one section, it's that final scramble up Mickledore that might have some thick ice there. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, which is always my philosophy. That's why I carry so much camera gear. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, beautiful day. It's forecast to be around about zero-ish and then it lifts a little bit, uh, maybe two or three degrees, a little bit of wind, so there's gonna be a bit of wind chill. I think as the day goes on, maybe the snow will melt a little bit, but hopefully get those fantastic views that I'm I told you about three amazing views. I'll get some nice photographs maybe and you can get some ideas for coming along on this walk. And anyway, who cares? Just come along with me and I hope you enjoy it. So yeah, let's get going. Okay, just getting to the crossing of Lingmel Gill. Doesn't look too bad actually. There's been a lot of water being put down lately, but it still doesn't look too bad. When it's in spate, yeah, not a lot of fun. <laughs> Pete's just gone across. Might wait for them to go. I don't want them to see me slip and fall and break my skull. Ah, let's do it. Come on, I might save my life. Yeah, that wasn't bad at all, actually. Not a lot of water. Um, even less than what, it's, what it is in the summer, actually. Which is kind of weird. Maybe a lot more water. But, uh, there wasn't. So anyway, that's it now, so I can get my head down and pretty much just head up this stepped path, like I said, a bit earlier. It has some really beautiful views looking up towards Pulpit Rock, uh, which is actually out of view now, typically. <laughs> and uh, like I say, we head up towards Hollow Stones and uh, yeah, just keep looking behind all the time because those views do begin to open up a bit more. Look at you, Barrow, behind. Wow. Okay, let's go.
just got up to that fork in the road I mentioned earlier and turned right basically now heading towards uh, Mickledore that's pulpit rock there um, and we're kind of at the snow line now really it's just started around about that fork 20 minutes 25 minutes I should be at the stretcher box at Mickledore that, so that's the call between uh, scaffold scaffold pike now see Simon Knot there on Scarfell. That little notch you can see there is actually the uh, top of the West Wall Traverse. Can't quite see the bottom of it, the start of it. The start of it is in, uh, it kind of shoots off from Lord's Rake. Just been following up a set of dog footprints. There doesn't seem to be uh, any human prints around. No boot marks, no boot prints or anything like that. Just a set of dog footprints. Is there a dog up here by itself? The wolves. <laughs> Am I gonna get snaffled up here by a wolf? A bit small for the wolf. It's like fin sized footprints actually. Just heading off here, look. Bizarre. That's strange, isn't it? Whew. Anyway, clouds are starting to lift now. Um, might be a bit washed out on this camera, but it is all starting to lift. I'm starting to see a bit more of pillar now. Right, let's get up to this bit of scree, get this done, and get the that final little scramble out of the way up to the stretcher box, and yeah, hopefully get some photographs. Right, you can really see Lord's Rake over there now. Hopefully, you can see it. That notch going all the way up. Superb. And the views out there are just looking gorgeous at the moment. But behind me, be careful in here now because it's a lot of scree and snow. Is this little nano gully that uh, I need to get up now. I can see quite a lot of ice there. I'll go up and assess, see if they put spikes on. Okay, as you can see, quite a bit of ice here. A lot of this really solid, thick ice. Um, I probably could pick my way up to the right hand side, stick into the rock, but I might as well put my spikes on and have a bit more confidence um, and enjoy it. Now, as you can see, it's only a short run, it's not far at all. So, what I'm going to do is spikes on, camera on because I want to film it, and I'm going to put my other camera away because I don't want to smash it. So, uh, yeah, let's do that and get up there. Put my gloves on, because it is getting pretty cold. Actually, just standing around there, not quite cold. So, spikes on. Look at it, it's all clagged in now. But we're just gonna head up this little patch here and uh, see how we get on. Oops. As I said, I, mean, I could probably just go up the these bits of rock here, but I just want to be absolutely certain, you know, if I do have to stand on bits of ice that I'll be all right and not fall off the mountain. Um, yep, yeah, grabbing solid bits of the mountain rather than loose rock. We don't want loose rock. Obviously, you know, on a non-icy day, this is a piece of cake, really. I do apologise for any heavy breathing, by the way. <laughs> right, I think that's pretty. 
pretty much the worst of it done. It's just that bottom bit there, but it's really icy. Ooh, and um, yeah, not a lot to grab hold of. But this is loose, this is loose screen now. I'm here, I have to be careful. Oh, I wish I put my, my mitts on now, actually. And these gloves are soaking wet. I think I'll go, um, I'll go straight up here. Fingers have gone numb. <laughs> it's gone. Straight up. Up in there. And yeah, go up there. Yes, that was very doable, even without spikes really. But the spikes just allow me to dig in properly and, you know, go up those icy bits. Look at that view now. Flipping heck. <laughs> Gorgeous. Here we go. So on a dry summer's day, that's a nice, quick and easy way up. Check that out. Wow. Oh, isn't that absolutely stunning? So we're now at the call between Scarfell Pike. Scarfell, so this is broad stand here, pretty much inaccessible. So, you have to, if you're going to go to Scarfell, you've got to go via Lord Rake or drop down to Fox's Tarn, which is like bloody faff. See Lord Rake over there, look, looking very nice, but absolutely gorgeous looking out towards Estale now. And well, all of it really, I mean, Crinkles there, you've got the old man and Swirl How and everything way off in the distance. Beautiful, and look at the drama unfolding over on Pillar now. It's just incredible. Look at that. Wow. Such a beautiful day, it really is. A bit hazy, you know. <laughs> there was something in there. Never quite right, but I don't know. Hazy sometimes can be quite magical. Um, so I don't mind that at all. Just looking gorgeous, I mean, flipping out. What a day, and it sounds like the jets are up as well. They'll be coming down this valley here probably. Let's have a look. Can't see them. There again, they could be right in front of my eyes. I still won't be able to see them because my eyes are that rubbish. I'm surprised I can take any photographs at all. <laughs> right, so stretch box here. Like I say, this is the call. Next stop up to Scarfell Pike. Um, yeah, go and check out the summit views from up there. Let's go. Ready? Stretch box. Such a beautiful place. I'm very surprised by the lack of wind actually. I thought it'd be quite windy here at this notch, but not a breath. But flipping heck, it is so bright at the moment with the sun on the snow. I'm really struggling to to see, my eyes are going to start bleeding in a minute. But anyway, a little bit of a short walk up now to the summit, and that's it, you know, we're, we're there. Like I say, shortest and most direct route to England's highest mountain. Pretty cool. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. It really is mind-blowingly gorgeous. You just don't realise how gorgeous until you're here. 
stood looking at it with your actual eyes. <laughs> right, let's push on a bit further. Interesting looking weather out there at the moment. Back up towards Scarfell. Clouds are spilling over uh, Mickledore, dropping down to Estill. Absolutely gorgeous. And if I spin you around, you can see it's all coming up from Tubber side now, from Lingmill side. And the summit is is going to be clagged in. I don't mind that because actually Scarfell Pike's got a bit of a boring summit anyway. This is just a route to get up, tick it, and move on. Um, we're gonna be moving on to three superb views. So I'm hoping it all clears out at that point. I don't care about it now. Approaching the summit now. I can see a few bodies moving around up there. Just here, literally five minute walk. And uh, yeah, I reckon it's be quite busy up there. Such a beautiful day. And uh, yeah, it will be. <laughs> So, let's go and have a look. is worth popping across from the summit there over to this little bump on the south side of the summit just make out the, the people up there on the, uh, the summit proper because you get these views even though it keeps clagging in looking down into Estill that's rough crag down there and down into Eskdale. You can just see the river going down there, threading its way. Green holes down there somewhere. It keeps disappearing, this view. But a minute ago, we could see, see Ill Crag, and that's where we're going to go later on. And obviously, over that way, Scarfell. It's always clacked in. What a shame. Might give it a few minutes and see if. Uh, See if this clears out again and we get some more views. I'm looking at it every, every second actually. It, it changes. You can just see the, the river down there. Right, so that is the quickest and most direct route to Scarfell Pike. I hope you found it useful. And uh, maybe it's a route that you'll do in the future. If you've not done it before at all, Scarfell Pike at all, it could be a good route. And if you have done it before but done it in other routes but not that way, it's definitely worth doing. So now onwards with the rest of the day. If you're not interested in the rest of it, then see ya. <laughs> Maybe uh, you'll watch some other videos, but if you are keen to see some of the most amazing views ever, then stick around, because we're gonna head off now to Broad Crag, where I think is, I think is the best out of all of them. It's just gorgeous, it's an unbelievable view. So let's go and check it out. OK, 
Okay, I'm a call. Guys, meet call, call, meet the guys. <laughs> so the last time I came up, Scarfo Pike actually no, it wasn't last time. It was the time before that when I did the corridor route. Came up this little bit of a scree shoot. Not very nice at all. But look at that view out there. What a great little call. <laughs> Gorgeous. But now up to Broad Crag, so it is a little bit of a pull up now. It's going to be a bit of a sweat fest because I've got all my layers on. <sighs> but it'll be right. As you can see, it's all clagged in again. So I don't know if I'm going to get any views at all. <laughs> can you believe it? Now over on Broad Crag, you can see, oh, you can't see it anymore, it's gone. But take my word for it, uh, Scarfa Pike was just behind me there. And take my word for it once again, Great Gable is out there, and Ling Mail, and all of them. <laughs> Real shame. But this is, this is one of my favorite summits in Analytics. Despite the fact that it's a boulder field and it's horrible to walk on, it's got some of the best views in the world looking out that way, looking north towards Great Gable, um, Ling Mail and what have you, and looking down to Piers Gill. It's beautiful and it's so quiet. No one comes up here. And I think it's because of the fact that it is a boulder field and people are heading, you know, from Scarfell Pike or to Scarfell Pike via um, Great End that long path from Great End up to next to Broad Crag. The path kind of runs down the side. There's Scarfell Pike. Oh, and there's Great Gable. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people either just don't even realize they're going past Broad Crag, or they don't care, because to go up here, you do have to go up a little bit of a, well, you have to walk on these flipping boulders and they can be horrible. Oh, and there's Stihead Tarn. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Just getting little moments of it, which is all right, you know, it's, it, it means that it could all clear out at any moment. I'm gonna get set up with my camera and just see what happens. Um, yeah, give it maybe half an hour and then head over to Ill Crag, which is over there, not too far away. I love being here, love it. And I know that you guys do it too as well. I know that you, feel the same passion about this place that I do. Um, that's, I guess that's why you watch these, because it, it brings it all back to you and you can relate to the feeling you get when you hear the sights, the sounds, the smells, everything. You know, it's the full sensory uh, smorgasbord. <laughs> Waffling. I do apologise. I'm going to eat. So I'm going to sit here. It's uh, out of the wind a little bit. Wind got up a little bit to the summit, at the summit here. Um, so I'll just drop down on this side a little bit and uh, yeah, get some food and hope and pray. <laughs> so I'll see you in a bit. It's almost there. It's really trying to, to clear, but not quite. That's Lingmill right there. And it's a beautiful shaped mountain, like a cresting wave going up. We can only see half of it, it's a real shame. Bits of Great Gable there as well. Almost see the summit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to Ill Crag. It'll clag in there, it'll clear here. So whoever comes after me will have fantastic views. I won't. <laughs> I'm feeling dejected already because a minute ago Great End was looking good and now that's all clagged in as well so I mean look at Stiad Tarn down there. Gorgeous. So I'll be there walking past that tarn a little bit later on after Great End uh, going down to Sprinkling Tarn and then dropping down to Stiad there and then whew, bombing it right down the valley to the pub. Right, I'm getting cold. I've had something to eat. 
Um, it is definitely getting chilly now, just hanging around. You can't hang around for long. Um, so I'm going to head over to Ilkrag, like I say, which is just across here. And hopefully, fingers crossed, hey, it's clear, the top's clear. Whether the view down in the valley is clear is another thing. So there you go. Off to Ilkrag. Let's everybody please just keep your fingers crossed. Feet, toes, legs, arms, everything crossed. For a view. Light's gone rubbish. It really has gone absolutely awful. Um, very flat, there's obviously a lot of clag going on, but that's not a problem. But, and it was forecast to do this, some really high level cloud has come in, like cirrus cloud, and it's just, it's acting like a massive diffuser, so even when the patches are opening up between these lower clouds, there's no sunlight spilling into the, into the valleys, onto the mountains, uh, onto the landscape. So it's looking very flat now. So... I think I'm going to show you the views. I don't think I'm going to hang around here or at Great End for sunset. The plan was to go and stay at uh, Great End for sunset. See if I can get some nice photographs, but it's, it's not going to happen, not with this amount of cloud. But we're going to have a look at the view anyway, so. Crag. Pretty damn good view, I think you'll agree. <laughs> Gorgeous. Such a shame about the light. It really is a shame. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Let's love it. Bowfell, S Pike, Crinkles there. All the way down into up, well, it's upper S Dale and down into S Dale. You can see a little bit actually, way out. Again, you won't be able to see it on this. The green, green grass of S Dale pastures down there but yeah this is a great moss down here wonderful <laughs> it really does feel like you could be in Scotland or somewhere like that really remote and wild I'm gonna head over to Great not Great Gable Great End and hopefully get that final view there it's not looking clagged at the moment might be able to get the view warm to get the shots because the light's gone like I say but I can at least show you what I mean, you know. So let's go and have a look. If you're wondering where Great End is, by the way, it's that one there that's just now clagged in. <laughs> Honestly, I just can't believe it. It's just unbelievable. I was going to film up round Mickledore today, get the drone up because it's beautiful at that moment, as you saw. It's gorgeous and sunny and, and atmospheric. I switched it on, drone was working. Switched the app on, kept crashing. Turns out, did a quick, uh, quick scan on the internet, that Google have basically broken a uh, DJI app <sighs> for my phone. So, yeah, I couldn't get the drone up at all. So I'm just gonna drop down now. Do lose a little bit of height here. Normally this is a flipping horrible section actually. It's just, you know, real boulder field. But because of the snow, it's filled in the gaps a bit and we can kind of walk. We, <laughs> we can walk. We with my legs can walk uh, between the gaps on this compacted snow, so it's pretty good.
want to get too close because this is obviously just cornice and ice and all sorts. That wind is trying to push me over it though. So I won't get any closer. But just incredible. Look at it. It's just like a sheer wall of ice. But you know, someone has climbed out of there. You can see some ice axe marks and footstep things, footprints, whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> should have expected this it's all clagged in again so we're not going to see the full extent of this view Honestly, let's just give up let's just go home i should have just got the pub but look at it look at it out there so running along the edge of the, the gully there you can start to see sprinkling tan now let's get a little bit of sunshine as well so maybe it'll come out all right just trying to stay obvious bits of solid ground but you know you get here in a minute and it's just a sheer drop so you do need to be careful if there's sprinkling tan down there and then ordinarily you'd be able to see Alan Crags and Glaramara you can see right down to Seathwaite um, Castle Crag Keswick doing all that sort of stuff but uh, never mind love these rock formations here beautiful what I might do is I might just put a picture up uh, that I took last time I was here again it wasn't great conditions but it was at least clear you could see what the the view was sort of opening out now but not not great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head up to the other side of Great End um, to a place where there is like a bonus view, I would call it. It's, the, it's a similar view to what you'd get on Broad Crag looking towards Lingmill. Um, but it is absolutely gorgeous overlooking the corridor route. Um, we'll see if that's clear. You never know, it might be. It's not looking like it's going to clear, but my goodness, look at Piers Gill. I'm going to do a vlog actually, I'm going to dedicate a vlog to Piers Gill one day. I'm going to come up and just spend a bit of time walking around the top of it, maybe go up a little bit of it, see how far we can get up, but it's, it, it's worth its own vlog. I've said it before, it's like our own mini Grand Canyon, nano Grand Canyon, it's tiny but incredible place when you're up close and personal. What I'll do is I'll do the same as I did over there. I'll show you a photograph of this scene here with the corridor route down there, Peasgill and Lingmel looking gorgeous. And to be honest, it wasn't great. Um, I was never happy with those photographs, to be honest with you, but they'll come in handy now so you can see uh, what it's like. Look at these dark clouds coming in here. Flapping up. Bringing a bit of snow, who knows? But uh, yeah, I took that photograph from that little bit of rock and sticks out there. I was just sat there waiting for the conditions to, to get better, and well, they didn't. I actually had a bit of a kip there as well. So I just laid down, took my bag off, and then uh, slept there for about half an hour just waiting for the, for the light to come, you know. Um, but it didn't. But what did happen was this. Uh, her DU came round the corner with a couple of her lambs, you know, the little black lambs. And I managed to, they were so cute these two, I managed to get uh, a couple of photographs of, of one particular one. And it turns out that actually it's, well it's one of my favourite photographs I've never taken actually. Um, very popular one. It's uh, a lot of people have bought it. It's in uh, Keisty and Ambleside, they've got it up there as well. You know, I just got to show, I was waiting for a, a view to open up and actually it was a little herdy lamb that, uh, that made me, you know, remember this moment and this place more than anything. <laughs> it's great. It's times like this that I really wish I've left my spikes on. I'm just going to dig my edges in, see how we get on.
You know, it might be rubbish for photographs, but flipping egg. It is good for the soul. Look at it. Oh, everywhere you look, it's just grrr, incredible stuff. But like I say, you know, you take a picture of that, get it home, and it just looks rubbish, it's flat. So it needs a bit of light in there, really, to, uh, to illuminate the rock or, or some feature on it. Otherwise, it just looks a bit lost. Approaching Esk Halls now. And it's at this point that we drop down towards Sprinkling Tarn. And it's at this point, actually, that I took another very popular herdy photograph. I called it Good Company on uh, Instagram and on my website as well. And it's a really cute herdy that was just stood there. Um, and it looked like it had little pipe cleaner legs. Because the legs just didn't look real. They were like, you know, they were too straight and too lined up like something out of Wallace and Gromit, you know. Uh, and I had so many people on Instagram saying that's not real, it's fake. And it was featured on various feature accounts and I saw a lot of people going, ah, that's rubbish, it's fake. You know, it's not real. <laughs> Believe me, it was real. make out Stayed Town now. Yeah, just here. Look at this. Just love this drama. All these clouds whipping across the little hills here. And the crags. Absolutely gorgeous. The sun has set. It's around about uh, half five now. It's set or it's about to set. And it has significantly in the last five minutes the light has just dropped and I think I'm right on the edge of the uh, limits of this camera now. Okay, this is a mountain rescue stretcher box. Uh, Stayed town, obviously, over that way. Uh, which actually marks the, the point at which I head off now back down to uh, Wasdale. Finally got to see Ling Mel today. Chuffed a bit. <laughs> Such a great mountain that I love it. And before, set up on Great End there. And that's where I fell asleep that time and uh, got the photograph of the Hurdy looking across uh, to Ling Mel and uh, Peter's Gill. And you can finally see the pub. You will not be able to see it on here, no way. Well, you might be able to. Way over in the valley. What a flipping day. It's <laughs> been a bit of a, bit, a mixed bag, really. It's, you know, I've been disappointing in, in terms of not being able to get the drawn up because of that, that technical problem. Um, I will be reeling from that for quite some time, actually, because uh, it was wonderful conditions at that moment and it would have been nice to have had that footage. But, just being up in the mountains, yeah, I didn't get the views I wanted to get, but I managed to show you guys the views, I hope, um, and the places where you can go to, to get them. Look, look at it. That's Great Nips. That's where Nips Needle is, amongst all that lot. It's a little bit like the Old Man of Store. That's about as much of the Old Man of Store I saw as well. Anyway, that's another story. Yeah, so, you know, if you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It doesn't matter, just like it anyway. You know, it all helps with this flipping world of algorithms that we live in at the moment. And, you know, if you want to support the channel, which is really important as well, because it puts fuel in the tank, um, it pays for parking, all kinds of things. It pays, it pays for gear, all this is really expensive stuff, and it's, you know, it's, it's hard work, I have to save up for it. So if you do want to support the channel, just head over to my website at blackcrag.uk. Wonderful walk. Route is in the description, as always. And, uh, yeah, if you can get out and do it, come and do it. I highly recommend it. And if you don't want to do this whole extra bit that I've done at the end, 
you could just go back down off Scarborough Pike down the tourist track, which is the way that most people go up. And still have a good day out, you know, you still get some belt-in views. You can see the bright lights of the pub now, and I get there, get a pint in, and uh, I'll see you out on the next adventure. I don't know where it's gonna be, or when, it all depends on weather, but uh, I can't wait for it to happen, and I can't wait for you guys to come out with me. So I'll see you then. Thank you.